Hello class, today we are going to look at dividing segments in a one-dimensional coordinate system. All right, so let's just jump into this. First things first, we need a definition, and that's going to be congruent segments. Congruent segments are two or more line segments that have the same length, and the way we show that in the diagram is with these little tick marks here. All right, so AM has one tick mark, MB has one tick mark, so they are congruent to each other. CD DE have two tick marks, so they are not congruent to those first two segments, but they are congruent to each other. Segments that have the same number of tick marks are congruent to each other. So segment AM is congruent to segment MB. Segment CD is congruent to segment ED. This symbol right here, this little equal sign with a squiggle on top of it, that is congruent, okay? Because we don't want to write out the word is congruent to every time, so we use symbols. Geometry is very much a language of symbols. That's why I'm not writing out the word segment AM. I just put a little segment above it. No, it's segment AM congruent to segment MB. And as we saw, this means they have the same length. So the length, no bar above it, the length of AM equals the length of MB. And I know this is a very nitpicky thing, but shapes are congruent, but the values here, the value of its length, is equal to the value of the other length. Values are equal, shapes are congruent. All right? One other thing, notice M here splits segment AB into two congruent segments, right? So what that means is that M is a midpoint. It is a point that divides a line segment into two congruent segments. So AM is the same length of is MB, so it is M is the midpoint, right? M is the midpoint of segment AB, D is the midpoint of segment EC. And since these two lengths are the same, what that also means is that the length of AB is twice the length of either half, all right? It's twice the length of AM. We could also say it's twice the length of MB. We could also flip this around the other way, of course, and say that AM is half the length of AB. All right? So let's do some stuff with that. Let's take a look here. Point O is the midpoint of segment WT. All right? We want to find two things. We want to find the length, no bar, right? The length of WT, and we want to find the length of segment CT. Okay, so first things first, WT, that's this right here. Well, it tells me that O is the midpoint, right? And if O is the midpoint, then what that means is that WO is the same length as OT, right? And so these two are the same length because it's the midpoint. It divides them into two congruent segments, so we can plug this in. 3x plus 5 is going to equal 5x minus 2. First, let's move our x's together, so subtract 3x from both sides. And 5 is equal to 2x minus 2. Add the 2 to both sides. 7 equals 2x. And so x is equal to 3.5. Now, that's not my answer. I'm not looking for x. I'm looking for the length of wt. So what I can do is I can take this and I can plug it in to one of those. So I'm going to plug it into wo, because why not? So 3.5 gets plugged in for x. So w, the length of WO is 3 times 3.5 plus 5. So the length of WO is 15.5, but I don't want WO either. That's just half of the segment. I want the length of the entire segment. And, well, we know the whole thing is going to be twice this half, right? Because that's only half of it, so we double it. So 15.5 times 2, and the length of WT is 31. So there's the length of WT. Now let's find the length of CT right there. Well, we've got these little tick marks on it, right? So that means that CT, segment CT, is congruent to segment OT, which means they have the same length, right? And if these two have the same length, what else can we do with it? We, we can find OT, right? Find out what OT is, and I know what CT is. Well, OT is equal to WO because O is the midpoint. And since O is the midpoint, they have the same length. So WO has a length of 15.5. We found that out right here. And if that's what the length of OT is, then that is the length of CT. 
because they are congruent to each other. They've got the little tick marks there. All right, so that's congruent segments and midpoints. What we're going to do now is we are going to find the midpoint on a number line. Okay, a, this is a one-dimensional coordinate system. It just has one dimension, just x. So, if m is the midpoint of segment AB on number line, then the coordinate of m is equal to the average of the coordinates of A and B. All right, so with a formula, m is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2, right? Because that's how you find the average. You add the 2 up and you divide by having the n. So let's take a look at this, all right? Let's find m if a is at negative 6 and b is at 10. Well, we're just going to take these two points, negative 6, 10, plug them into the formula. All we got to do, add them up, negative 6 plus 10, well, that would be 4, divided by 2, and m is Right there, there's the midpoint. We can check this pretty easy, because remember, what this means is that the length of AM has to be the same as the length of MB, so that those two segments are congruent. So we can just test that. Distance, remember, is absolute value of the two points, right? That's from the ruler posture a couple days ago. So negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8, but we want the absolute value, 8, because distance is always positive. And over here, for MB... 10 minus 2 is 8. Those equal, so we did it right. It works. Good. Now, we're going to do this slightly different. What if we want to find A, given that B is at 4 and M is at negative 12? So this time they gave us the midpoint and said, hey, find this other endpoint. Okay? Well, that's not fine. We still just plug it into the formula here. Just this time, I know what M is. So M is negative 12. X1 is A. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to call it A. And then B is X2, so that's 4. So something plus 4 divided by 2 equals negative 12. First thing we want to do is get rid of that divide by 2 by multiplying, right? That's how you undo division. That's off a little bit. There we go. Multiply by 2. So that gives me 24 is equal to A plus 4. Subtract the 4 both sides, and A is at negative 28. Test the distance on that, and we see that it is a distance of 16 either way. And so this is our midpoint. All right. So now for something a little bit more difficult. What if I don't want the midpoint, but if I want to split it up into a different ratio, something that's not half and half? Okay. Now, ratios, what we're going to do here is this is of a directed line segment. That means we're going in a specific order. And the directed line segment, that should have a thing over it. Now, the directed line segment AB starts at A and goes to B. And we want to split this up in a ratio of 3 to 5. So I'm going to take point P and I'm going to put it in here somewhere where it splits it up in that ratio. Now that does not mean that I'm going to come over 3 units here, 3 units, and then that's a lot more than 5, right? That's not what this is saying to do. What this is saying to do is to split it up so I have 3 equal pieces here and 5 equal pieces there. And so you see, my answer is going to be somewhere in between, whatever this is, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3. I don't know exactly where, but that's where it's going to go. Somewhere in there. So now we've got to figure this out. All right? So first, well, how long is this segment? Let's take a look at that. So we're looking for the distance from A to B. So what we're going to do, we're going to do 6 minus negative 8 be negative 14. And of that negative 14, how much do I want? All right, because I don't want the whole thing. I just want these three spaces, right? So that's three out of how many spaces total? Well, out of eight, right? Three plus five. So that'd be 14 times three eighths. Well, if you just get that number, that's just going to tell you how long these red spaces are. That's all it's going to tell you. You got to know where do you start? So, well, I started at negative 8. I started at point A. So, 14 times 3 eighths is 5 and a quarter plus negative 8, where I started from. And that's going to give me that P should be at negative 2 and a quarter. All right? Now, that's a lot of steps. Easier if we have a formula, right? Because then all you got to do is just plug it in. So, let's see. What did we do? First, we did B minus A. Then 
we multiplied by our ratio here, 3 over 8, so 3 over 3 plus 5. Then we added that to our starting point. So there it is. B minus A times our ratio, which takes the first number divided by the two numbers added up, plus A, where you started. So let's do this one more time real quick. Let's just change all my numbers here. And so now I want a ratio of 4 to 3. Notice I changed my A. I moved A over to this side and B over to that side. So let's get rid of that. It's not going to be there. Okay, so now it's going to be somewhere 4 to 3. So it's still going to be closer to B than it is to A. Because the A side is going to have four pieces. The B side will have three pieces. Right? So it's going to be somewhere over here somewhere. So we still we take B minus A. I'm just going to plug stuff in. So 9 minus 23. Wait, my buttons go. There we go. And then the first number, 4 over the two ratios added up, 4 plus 3, so it's going to be 4 over 7, plus what? Plus the 23. Now, very important that you do this as B minus A. If you flip that around, your answer will come out somewhere over here, and that's not going to be in our segment, right? So you have to do this as B minus A, so let's pull up my calculator. Okay, so let's just type this in. We have 9 minus 23. Close parentheses, I'm going to simplify that a little bit. I'm just going to call that 4 divided by 7, because I can do 4 plus 3 in my head, and then plus 23. And I get an answer of 15. And there's my answer. All right? So not too bad, much easier if you use the formula. Here's how you get the formula, but the formula is nice and easy. So ratios, use the formula. Very important that you take whichever letter is listed first, and that's the one that's A. Okay, whatever letter is listed second, that's B. So B minus A. Very important you do that. All right. Midpoints. Use this little midpoint formula. You just add the two numbers up, divide by two. Very simple, unless you're looking for an endpoint. In this case, it's a little bit more difficult, but not too bad. Most important to remember, midpoint is the the midpoint. It is divides it into two congruent segments, so you have half of it on this side, half of it on that side. Uh, shapes are congruent, values are equal. Hopefully you found that useful, and I will see you in the next video.